Paris is super dense. There's not a lot of open space. Where I grew up, you know, you had yards between houses. My running path is full of restaurants all of a sudden. I don't find it challenging to be here as opposed to being in open spaces because I feel like there's a trade-off there, there's a benefit. Kind of the culture and the access to people and other spaces that you wouldn't get in a smaller place. Can you imagine living there? On that rooftop, right, right in front of us. Paris is obviously one of the most densely populated cities in Europe, if not, I think, the most. And so just lots and lots of people living on top of each other in tiny spaces. Can I can show you guys around first. Yeah, great. Okay. I've heard different stories about this building back here, the one that I actually live in, which is that it, uh, somebody told me there was actually the office of like a pharmaceutical company at one point, and then they redid it into just a segmented apartments. Some of them are just the size of one window or one set of two smaller windows, and some of them actually expand even farther. So mine is really, uh, I think, as small as it gets. 13 square meters, about 140 square feet. It's a very small apartment, so they're like Chambre de Bonne, the servants' quarters from back in the day. So a lot of the hired help lived here. So welcome to the Chez Moi. When I first got here, this place, the, this bed was not here. Nothing that you see basically was here. There was like a bed in the corner here that was this rickety old 50 year old bed that literally fell apart whenever I slept in it. Like these things are always trying to come out. It's ready to fall apart. So I don't sleep on it, which is why this big orange mat is on top of it. That orange mat I actually put on the floor every night and sleep on. Da, 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 da. And so I had an idea for what to do with this place where I was use the space more efficiently. Like measured everything, drew a bed that was, you know, up high like this. And thankfully found a company that makes these beds. And one of the key things about it, one of the nice things are the stairs. So not only are the stairs there to get upstairs, but they're also storage. So this is where my, this is my dresser now. So my clothes are in here. I see the openings are, are regular. They're kind of slanted. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a nice, it's definitely a nice look. And then this bottom one is like the Wi-Fi cabinet. And this actually used to be where I used to keep the base for my kettle. So when I, my old quote unquote coffee station slash, you know, ramen station, was I'd have the base in here plugged in and then the plastic kettle sitting up in my closet here. Take that out, put it on the stairs, boil water, cook with it. Thankfully I don't have to do that anymore. But it, you know, you, you make the most of the space you have. So the biggest, the, the most important thing was that I could stand underneath this. So normally it wouldn't be this tall, but they have these little stilt extensions and that makes sure that it's tall enough for me to walk under. I can't jump safely under it, but um, I can walk under it. But the thing is that most days basically looks like sleeping upstairs, working uh, here, and then eating and living uh, non-work life here. So the couch, the couch is actually a bed as well. I got a good deal on this and I bought it specifically so that it would fold out in the space and leave enough space to have shelving under the TV. You have like a, a good inch or two of clearance, which is nice. So yeah, I sit, I eat most of my meals here, watch a lot of YouTube. In all the other mezzanine situations that I've seen, everybody has a ladder, which most of the time in these spaces, those ladders, they don't feel safe, really, <laughs> especially if you've been drinking. So this guy is great because it, I mean, you have to, obviously it's, it, it is narrow enough that you aren't going to go strolling up it, but uh, yeah, does the trick. And you can stand. So I can stand, not the, not the, the top top, but yeah, I can stand up here. So there's just enough space. And so then the bed has enough space then as well. Like you don't feel like you're right up against the ceiling. Like when you're sleeping, because I can obviously, I can sit up here and I've got plenty of space. When I'm up here, I feel comfortable. I don't feel like, and that the fan helps with just airflow, especially because the heat rises in here or moisture from the shower or whatever. How is it in summer? It's really hot in summer. That's the downside. So the fan is a, ne a necessity for summer. And then there are nights where I sleep downstairs. But you talk about upstairs and downstairs. I do, so I call this upstairs, yeah. Does that make you feel like you... <laughs> yeah, it feels, it feels like I've got double the square footage now. Do you actually spend any time up here? No, I, I <laughs> sleep up here. I was gonna build a whole station for like my phone charging and everything else, but I decided I don't want my phone up. To make sure that I sleep well, one of the ideas is to just make this space for sleeping. So I don't read up here, I don't spend any time up here unless I'm gonna sleep. That includes leaving my phone downstairs, which also makes it good because then when my alarm goes off, I have to get out of bed and go downstairs. 
I also had a moment, you can see there's a patch on the pipe there. The pipe got to the point that my upstairs neighbor used some pipe cleaner of some sort to remove a clog and it blew the pipe up. That's not great for sleeping up here because those smells rise. Do yep. you know how many feet you have here? It's 13 square yeah. meters. And how but high? I think it's like 11 feet, 11 and a half. To lose the high ceilings and the big window would be a big loss for okay. sure. I love natural light and I love high ceilings. I guess you'd say the square footage or the cubic footage of a space, like how much it feels like you can actually breathe is important. You have a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I have a toilet space that's been lightly renovated, thankfully. The sink there used to be tiny and there was a pseudo bidet underneath it that was more of a urinal than anything else. And I wouldn't want a toilet in here because I wouldn't want to live with that. The washing machine wasn't here. This, this is life changing to have this installed means I don't have to carry my laundry down the street to do my laundry every week. Can you open every the week. top, is that hard? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very small. It's like, yeah. it's, I think it's a five kilo, five and a half kilo according to the thing. So it's, it's, you know, just a little prep table now, but that's, you know, I went looking, it didn't have to look very high or low, but I went looking high and low for one that I knew would fit in the space. Mm -hmm. And I also knew that I didn't need much more than that because if I'm doing laundry once a week, now I'm running a lot more these days, so I'm doing laundry more like twice a week, but. And then it's a cooking surface as well. So then I put my little hot plate here and plug it in and you're good to go. So either I'm plugging, that I've got the one outlet. So either I'm plugging in my washing machine or I'm plugging in this guy. And that's, that's about it. So what can you cook on here? I, don't, I, don't, I can't cook a whole lot in here without going absolutely crazy because every surface in this place is just not the right height for cooking. No rush, we're cooking, we're cooking and relaxing. But I do like, I'll make pasta here all the time or some soups. I did during confinement make butter chicken once. And that's the thing is like, I like cooking, but I'm also so focused on work usually that like I don't have a lot of time or desire to cook. Yeah, so the shower is, is great. Um, it's a little bit small. You can see the hard water of Paris that accumulates every 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's great. I just replaced this guy not that long ago. These are their little balls. I think that they are supposed to filter the water, but somehow it also ends up building up the pressure. But it is, it is the calcare is coming through actually. You can see it's not that old and it's already, so you gotta soak this stuff in vinegar. It's the joys of Paris. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, so then this is the major drawback to the space. I don't have a toilet. So, so this is the midnight walk. <sighs> yeah, so one of the major downsides to living here is that I have to get dressed to go to the bathroom. But, you know, the price we pay. This is currently being used by the people that were renovating in here as a storage unit. So okay. That's great. But there are two toilets in here. And when it's just been me, <laughs> I tend to use one for one and one for the other. And then alternate between weeks. But otherwise, yeah, I bring my toilet paper with me and like put it on the door handle as my toilet paper roll. There have been times in the past when different people have lived here where we tried to share supplies, but like just doesn't work. So I don't even use this sink. I wash my hands in my own room and then bring my own toilet paper. So it's a bit like a dorm, except there's no really dorm mates. It is like a dorm. Yeah, it is like a dorm, except the parties are way worse here. <laughs> And yeah, the timer then is also a mild uh, downside, but you know, keeps the electricity bill low. So this is, then this is my closet and that's where the electrical boxes are, which you can see one of those is definitely still from a long, long time ago. It's nice to have the closet space though to hang stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's great. So fortunate to have that. Yeah. There's a little bit of closet space up there, but it's just where I put like duvets and stuff. So okay. it's uh, it's also really hard to get into. You have to like climb up. But I could actually build some shelving in there. And this is the thing, I have more space to make more efficient, but I don't necessarily have stuff to put in it. So why bother? And also why encourage myself to keep more stuff than I need? So I'd rather just not. When I moved to West Africa, I had to sell all my stuff and got it down to two duffel bags. Done. Moved onto a ship where I had not enough space for that stuff and then just kept paring my life down. And so now I'm in a place where like, I have some space to pair up back up. I'm, I would love to have my little library grow again, have books, sure. But overall, I just don't need a lot of stuff and I don't really want the space to get too crowded. I do like having a measure of clarity to my space, I guess. And so for me, I'm getting to that point where like, I just put up a map of my hometown on the wall 
a little Pullman Washington. But the thing is that the, the problem with this is that I realized after the fact was that the, the glare off this plastic is just brutal. So then it makes you question like, well, do I want to add another thing? Because the last one, I don't know. So I've got like a little herb garden, but I built kind of a little coffee station here in the corner. And then also just add some storage, you know, like I put my sweaters in here. You just got to kind of scoot in. And again, everything's kind of measured to fit in here. Ideally, as close to perfect as possible. Can't pull these guys out all the way. So I can, if I've got podcasting or some streaming, can pull that out here. I've got a webcam hidden here. Do you feel cramped? Because it's, you know... No, I feel pretty comfortable. Especially because when I'm working, um, I'm so focused. So, you know, next projects would be uh, my monitors aren't at the level they should be. But I kind of like, you know what, it's interesting because in living in a small space, I have recognized that there's something nice just about being cozy and being like, you know, I don't need a ton of space. Thankfully, I have access to other spaces. I can go outside, but there's just something really nice about being, it's almost like being held in a warm hug by my own space. And so that's nice. The one downside to this bed, when I open this window, it, it hits the corner just barely. So I can't open the windows anymore beyond, you know, cracking them open for some air. So the art in the wall, what's the story? This art is all from two of my books. I used to write, I still, I will get back to it, but I used to write a lot of science fiction and fantasy. These are all books that I've written over the course of the last decade. This book is where the illustrations on the wall come from. And these were done by Nimit Malavia, who's a phenomenal artist. This was originally a real-time fantasy blog. And so this is the journal of a world-class swordsman who was exiled into the world's most hostile jungle. And he's hunting for this guy. And every entry that he wrote went live on the website in real time. So if he wrote at night, it went live that night. If he was running for his life for a couple days, it would post a few days later. Do you think in order to be capable of living in such a small space, you sort of need to have a, like a rich... Interior. Uh, an introspective life? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. When I first moved here, I lived most of my life outside of these walls. And I would only come home late at night edit, go to sleep, and then leave again. All right, there we go. Which is also why I didn't need a kitchen because I was never here to eat. I was never here to do anything. It helps that I'm alone, I guess, but it also managed to make a fairly cozy space out of it. And I'm always busy. I'm also never bored. So there's that, and back we go. It was never one that was sold on the white picket fence in the nuclear family to begin with. So that, that vision of what the American dream was, but I think I also, I struggled because it was very hard for me personally to strike out and, and pursue the dreams that I had, that I was limited where I was. The nice thing about coffee is that you also don't have to worry too much about, it's not like you're dealing with chicken. <laughs> I think Paris has a lot to offer, but only to those who are... I think Paris has a lot to offer if you are here to find it. I wouldn't say that it's a cure-all, especially depending on what you're gonna do. So there are challenges here too, for sure. And we'll give Nico his coffee. Awesome, thanks. Oops. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> for me, what Paris offers is a lot of inspiration. I feel at home here. I feel very much like I belong here in a lot of ways. And I'm constantly inspired just by the environment that exists here. Uh, so either I'm sitting here, like I said, watching YouTube or, um, cause I basically, I watch a lot of YouTube or I'm over here making YouTube. That's a sad life. Good morning. It's Saturday today and the, the weather has been very crazy. And I've got some people here, some lovely folks here filming. Uh, You'd see, I don't think there are any surprises, but you never know. I, I have no idea what they've been doing when I'm not watching both of them. I can't keep my eyes on both of them all the time. It's impossible. Spider-verse. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah, it is inside the Spider-verse. We're, we're flog-septing now. 